Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. This week I wanted to talk a little bit about magic items. I've talked about this a little bit before in various different ways about kind of shaping your world around magic items, about how we might give them out. But one thing that you often hear, especially when people talk about some of the older games, like what I'm running currently, original Dungeons & Dragons, is that there ends up being too many magic items in the world, right? You start off and you're like, okay, great. We roll up this hoard of treasure and this is plus one sword here. And the character gets it and then they use it for a little bit. Then they find a plus two sword and then they just kind of throw it away, right? The pile of magic swords problem. So one thing that I've seen people talk about and on the surface this is one of those like good things that I don't do it because it, it seems good on the surface is you give somebody a magic item. So they, they quest and they find this magic sword. It's plus one because they're first level. And then they keep this sword and you don't give out a lot of other magic items. And then eventually when they're third level, the sword just magically becomes magically becomes plus two, right? The, the item is unlocking powers as the character gets more powerful. In a way, this can kind of make sense, especially with uh, intelligent magic swords, for instance. Maybe it's got three powers. It has ESP, it has detect traps, as whatever. And it doesn't reveal those right away to the owner because it doesn't feel like you're worth it until you prove yourself. So... Yeah, I, I guess that could work. But my problem with this is that D&D, to me anyways, is about discovery and exploration. And if you find this one magic sword four adventures in, and then the rest of the time you play for the next year the campaign runs, you never find another magic sword because that one just gets get, keeps getting more powerful. That just doesn't seem as fun to me. <laughs> I like to, for the characters to find hordes of treasure with cool magic items all the time. I love giving them out. I talked about this in my other magic video where when I first started running 5th edition, not realizing kind of how things were balanced out or whatever, I gave out a bunch right away. And then they have to attune to them and this and that. And then it's like, so it's like, whoa, all of a sudden there's like no magic items. Like first they were everywhere. Now there's none. And, you know, that's not as fun, I don't think, for the players. But in later editions of the game, like I've talked about before, when the characters level, they get special magical powers and stuff. So that's kind of what you get there. So maybe having the one magic sword is fine. But again, I like the idea of adventure, exploration, discovery. This is why they're going out into the world, is to find these cool artifacts that they can then use to further themselves. And we have some, I'm going to call it literary tradition here, because one of the largest influences on Dungeons & Dragons was the Fritz Leiber stories of Farford and the Grey Mouser. And if you've read these stories, and if you haven't, go read them. Both Farford, who is a barbarian, and the Grey Mouser have weapons. You might even call them magical weapons. Farford has a broad sword that he calls Grey Wand and a poniard he calls Heartseeker. The Grey Mauser has a rapier that he calls Scalpel and a dark named Cat's Claw. But here's the thing, and they even explicitly point this out in some of the novels, they are always different swords and daggers. They just call the weapon they use Grey Wand or Scalpel. So this is something that we can do in a game. If you have a fighter and they name their sword when they find it, Heartseeker, right, after the uh, the, the Dirk from uh, Farford, when they get a plus two sword, they just give that sword to a henchman and go, no, no, that's not Heartseeker. That's some other sword. And you can have this. This sword here is Heartseeker. And that way you can still have that consistency because I know people like this idea of like starting with one sword and having it for your whole life. But here's the deal. The sword is only what you call it. So it's simple enough in the literary tradition, we see it, and simple enough in your game or your character if you're a player to just name whatever weapon you have what you call your weapon. And I mentioned there again, giving it to the henchman, which is a pretty common thing, right? When we are adventuring, especially at low levels, there's not a whole lot of gold to, to hire henchmen, so we hire who we can. Those that stick with us as we get to higher levels, we want to reward them. One way to do that is to give them some of the more minor magic items, like plus one swords or minor potions and stuff that we're not necessarily going to use all the time. It's a reward for them. It builds their loyalty. And again, in the world, it makes sense. You've got these people that are risking their lives traveling with the party that are just kind of standing back, not getting anything. That's not going to do well for their morale, right? So even if you're more of a narrative person, you got to think, this is important. So we get the treasure. We're not obligated to give it to the henchman, but, you know, I get a slightly better sword. I say, no, no, this is a sword I had all along. Here, I'll give you this sword. And this way, 
they get rewarded, they become loyal, and then if in like most OSR games, they become the replacement PCs when PCs go down, you've got people with magic swords right away. This I think is really cool. Now, I do understand that if a lot of magic items enter the world, then you start wondering, well, why aren't there magic shops and these kind of things? But again, that comes down to the kind of the world you're playing. And if you're playing in a very uh, kind of Borderlands type world, that's why. These things are being pulled from the Borderlands. And maybe they're being sent back to the civilization so a king can have a magic sword. But there's not like the local townsfolk aren't walking around with them, right? So they're still rare in that sense. So this is a pretty short one. I just, I've had this on my mind. I actually was thinking about this for a long time because again, this is one of those things you hear people talk about. Let the magic items grow with the characters. But to me, I think the characters want, or the players want to discover. And I think they want to find new hordes of treasure and new cool things they can play with. So definitely think about distributing the stuff so it makes sense. But also consider that if somebody hasn't found something in a while and they're just using that sword, instead of just making it a plus two sword because you feel like it, let them find the plus two sword. That gives two things, the sense of discovery and the ability to give it to a henchman to help build loyalty. This is kind of world building with the treasures and things that we find. Allow the players to do that. Otherwise, you're taking that out of their hands you're kind of, in a sense, removing their choices because you're not giving them a choice. You're like, well, you found a magic sword and you'll have that sword forever. And this is the way it is. You, people may even quest for very specific magic items if you allow that kind of thing with rumors. And even then, they might find something better or worse, or they might find a sword that had a great reputation used by the most powerful barbarian called Grey Wand. And when they find it, it's just a regular sword because that's the nature of it, right? Risk, reward, they're adventuring, they're discovering, what will they find next? That's the game to me anyways. So I would love to know how you guys handle this kind of stuff. Have you ever tried this magic item getting more powerful with the player idea? And how does it work for you? It sounds interesting on paper, but whenever I start really working through my head, it doesn't work for me. So let me know in the comments below. I'm sure you will. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video. Hit the little like thing. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Do all that goodness. In the description below, you will find a link to my Discord server. If you're not already signed up over there, join the Discord. We're having great conversations about this kind of stuff, right? Game development, playing the game, running the game. Lots of conversations going on over there. Really fun. Follow that link. Also, you're going to find a link to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. And I'll talk to you soon.